Hi, Jenna. Hi, Frank. Nice to see you. Thanks a lot for taking the time to answer some of my questions. My pleasure. My pleasure. Anytime. Um, I wanted to ask you about what the mainstream media has called um, a historic agreement between um, Israel and the UAE, uh, with um, the USA being the sort of broker of, of the deal. Um, you know, you know, the, the agreement is about announcing that the UAE um, so announced that it would it would fully establish diplomat diplomatic relations with Israel. And it's been hailed, hailed as, a, as a momentous agreement in, in, in the mainstream media and by, by Israel and by UAE and by the US. Um, what do you make of it? It is historic. It's historic in the sense that um, the, the levels that the UAE will stoop to, the low levels that they will stoop to, uh, to try to establish diplomatic relations when what they should have been doing was standing alongside us as Palestinians and pushing for the boycott of Israel. And instead we see that they've not only um, stooped to a new low, they were already at a low, but they've stooped to a new low, but that it's still hard for me to figure out what it is that they are gaining from, from all of this. And for me, Frank, the worst part of it is that in their propaganda of trying to sell this um, deal to Palestinians and to the rest of the world, they claimed as though they were doing it on our behalf, I mean, for our benefit, without ever consulting Palestinians, and to the contrary, doing exactly the opposite of what uh, Palestinian civil society was calling for and what also the Palestinian leadership was calling for, which was historic. So, um, I mean, the thing is, the UAE and Israel had a relationship, like, before, right? So, um, you know, the, these sort of deals and agreements and stuff, is it in, in, the, in the side of, in the parts of Arab countries, very sort of hypocri hypocritical in, in a way? Because we know most Arab countries, except Jordan, Egypt, and now the UAE, um, on paper, have no relations with Israel, but but in practice, do right? Do so, so, so some sort of trade deals and stuff like that. Some do, but we still do have we still ha do have uh, brothers and sisters who cross the Arab world who recognize that Israel is a colonizer, that Israel is an occupier, and that Israel has posed a threat um, not only to the existence of Palestinians but to a threat to the region as a whole. So. It's, it's true that there are some countries who have had these relations um, with Israel. The difference is that they still felt a little bit ashamed about it. And while they may have had relations with Israel um, kind of under the table, this is now something that's no longer under the table, but instead out in the open. And that's the part that is so troubling, is that at a time when we have uniformly across the board, people calling for the boycott of Israel, people calling for Israel to be held accountable, people calling for sanctions to be placed on Israel, that um, a country that has in the past agreed to support the Arab League boycott and, um, and, and stay firm with Palestinians has instead chosen that they're going to break that and, and go their own way. Now, you know, you know I, th I think you're right, and it's important to keep in mind that there have been relations between the UAE and Israel, and we've seen this over the past few years. For example, we've seen that, uh, that, there, that there were some Israeli officials who were going to, um, to the United Arab Emirates. We've seen in the past that there were flights that were coming in that were supposedly destined, uh, aid that was supposedly destined to um, Palestinians that was being done without coordination, uh, direct flights. Uh, we also saw that there were various, we've heard about various phone calls and so on. But the difference was that it was never something that was formalized. And, and, the, and the reason that this was never formalized was because uh, Palestinians weren't the ones who were giving it the green light. And here we are now, what the Emiratis are saying is, 
um, not only does do Palestinian does Palestinian do Palestinian does, does, excuse me not only does Palestinian decision making not matter, um, but on top of that. It's, 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 they're no longer bound by anybody and they can do whatever it is that they want to do. And, and what does it say also, or, or maybe like you know, reframing my question, um, it shows the, the disconnect, right, between civil society and, and the Arab people in general and, and governments, right? Because I think a lot of, you know, citizens of the UAE would strongly disagree with such a move, don't you think? I, I hope so. I mean, this is the um, this is now the the test. In the past, we've always said that there's a difference between the Arab the Arab regimes and the people of the Arab world, um, and I still firmly believe that. But we'll now see whether this is actually the case. Uh, whether you know Emiratis choose to come to 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 now to visit a country that is an occupier remains to be seen. You know, one of the things that was so disturbing when all of this came out was the, the propaganda machine that accompanied it. And the fact that we heard so many, or at least saw so many people on social media, so many Emiratis on social media praising this and, um, and then really trying to normalize relations And it leaves you, and also doing a revisionist history of, um, of the Egyptian leader, Anwar Sadat, um, and it leaves you with this feeling of questioning of whether uh, Emiratis are actually going to embrace this or whether this really is a disconnect between them and the, and the, the ruling government. I, I would like to think that there's a disconnect, but time will tell. You've mentioned that you were you were wondering what the UAE truly had to 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 win, you know, to to with this agreement. Um, something that they publicly announced is that that thanks to this agreement, Israel would stop its annexation to um, its plan. Sorry, to annex uh, the West Bank. So again, what, what do you have to to respond to, to this? You know, so this is the part that is the, um, where we feel as though we're taking the knives out of our back. Um, look, Frank, I think first and foremost, it's important to keep in mind that annexation has been going on for the past 53 years. The, there have been two processes of annexation. One is the informal track and the other is the formal track. On the informal track, this is the, the process that we've lived through now for since 1967 in the West Bank, I'm talking. And what, it, what that process is, is the theft of Palestinian land, um, taking that Palestinian land and turning it into Israeli-only housing, using that land and making Israeli-only infrastructure, barring Palestinians from accessing that land, uh, placing, um, Uh, checkpoints in the way, creating a system of apartheid, and and uh, on top of that, doing everything possible to make sure that that land becomes entirely cleared, uh, so that Palestinians can no longer access not only the land but the natural resources. Now that process has been going on for 53 years. That, that's the informal process. What Netanyahu sought to do was to finally formalize all of this and to say, I don't care what international law says, I'm going to declare that these lands are under Israel's sovereignty. The effect is one and the same. Now the Emiratis coming and saying that they are stopping annexation is a joke. Um, first, because I can guarantee you that uh, whether it's tomorrow being Sunday or in the coming days, that you will hear a new settlement announcement. Beyond that, within minutes after making this announcement, Netanyahu turned around on Israeli TV and said, who said we're stopping annexation? We're not stopping annexation. This agreement doesn't do anything. And, and so you know, it was, It's quite the opposite that I can guarantee you that all of this is going to continue, whether the informal, the informal is definitely going to continue, or the formal. And beyond that, here's the part where it stings so much, is that 
the, it took a lot of energy for Palestinian civil society to finally get the Palestinian leadership on board in terms of cutting off um, security collaboration with Israel and to push for sanctions to be imposed on Israel. It took a lot. It's taken more than two decades. And instead of them embracing and supporting and pushing other countries to respect and listen to what it is that we want, they turned around behind our backs, signed this agreement, and then turned around and said to us, well, we're doing it for your benefit. They're not doing anything for our benefit. They're doing it entirely for their benefit. And that's the problem front that I can't really wrap my head around. I still don't see what the benefit is, other than for them to say that they now have an alliance um, when it comes to Iran, other than to bring the arms trade out more out into the open. But even all of that didn't need to happen. And so what we end up with is that Israel has been violating um, international law for decades, gets rewarded for violating international law by having new recognition. And I guess that's, that's the, the most infuriating things, right? The way that over the years, over the last decades, while violating international law, while you know, bombing Gaza, um, while you know, torturing children, uh, while you know, imprisoning thousands of, of men and women, Palestinians, Israel seems, seems to be rewarded for it, right? So, Absolutely. Absolutely. so in, a, in a way, like, where does, does this sort of agreement leave the Palestinian authority? And where does it leave the Palestinian people, in your opinion? You know, I think that this is the part that is um, the, the, the element where this is now the, the time where the Palestinian Authority really has to uh, take account of where it is that it's going. And for quite some time, they've pursued a strategy of Uh, both two states, and they've also tried to pursue the strategy of negotiations and only negotiations. And it's failed, and it's very clear that it has failed. At the same time, a lot of their strategy has been built upon waiting for a new U.S. president and hoping that a new U.S. president is somehow going to um, change things. And sadly, it's become clear that nothing is going to change, that in fact, it's actually quite the opposite, that things are um, progressively getting worse. And one of um, the main thing about Trump's strategy, which was very well known to the Palestinian Authority from the very beginning, was Trump decided from the beginning that he was going to Do, he was going to do Israel's bidding. He was going to do Israel's work for it. And he was going to hand Israel all of the gifts that it wanted on a platter. And, and in doing so, he also made very clear that he was no longer going to um, speak to Palestinians, but that he was going to pursue it by going around Palestinians and going and speaking to Um, the other Arab states. And so this is precisely what he has done. Now, the Palestinian leadership, for its part, they didn't do enough or really anything to try to change or block that strategy. Instead, their, um, their approach has just constantly been that we can either ignore the Trump plan or we can uh, hope for a new democratic president instead of uh, Trump to take office. But they didn't really do the work of switching gears, of shifting strategies, of thinking about how to secure Palestinian freedom other than through that framework of two states and other than through that framework of bilateral negotiations. So in many ways, this, um, this recognition Uh, for them, the reason it stings so much is because I think they're slowly starting to see the fruits of their labor or the fruits of their lack of labor. And the fruits of their lack of labor have been that for decades, they've taken the approach of recognizing Israel 
And so now countries around the world, they shouldn't rightfully do this, but they should not do this. I want to be clear. They should not be doing this. But countries around the world are also saying, well, if the Palestinians are recognizing them, so too, um, what's the problem if we do the same? Thank you, Jenna. My pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs>